live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or whether we die, we belong to the Lord. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. I invite you to join me in the opening prayer. It's printed in bulletins. O oh God, you have ordered this wonderful world, and know all things in earth and in heaven. Give us such faith that by day and by night, at all times and in all places, we may without fear commit ourselves and those dear to us to your never-failing love in this life and in the life to come. Amen. We have come today to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Ray Myers. We put our trust in the promise of Christ who said, because I live, you shall live also. For dying, Christ destroyed our death, and rising, Christ restored our life, and Christ will come again in glory. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us who we name in our hearts before you. We praise you for your child, Ray, who you have taken to yourself. Grant peace to their souls. Let perpetual light shine upon them. And help us so to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You would reach for one of the hymnals, turn to number 467, when we sing together, How Great Thou Art.
Let us make our confession to the Lord. Join me as printed in your bulletins. Holy God, before you our hearts are open, and from you no secrets are hidden. We bring to you now our shame and sorrow for our sins. We have forgotten that our life is from you and unto you. We have neither sought nor done your will. We have not been truthful in our hearts, in our speech, in our lives. We have not loved as we ought to love. Raise us from our sins into a better life, that we may end our days in peace, trusting in your kindness unto the end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Scripture says, who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Know that you are forgiven. And be at peace. Amen. Again, reading from scriptures. Know that our help is in the name of the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. I invite you to join me in the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, reading from chapter 15, that is how it will be when the dead come back to life, he told them. When the body is planted, it decays. When it comes back to life, it cannot decay. When the body is planted, it doesn't have any splendor and is weak. When it comes back to life, it has splendor and is strong. It is planted as a physical body. It comes back to life as a spiritual body. As there is a physical body, so there is a spiritual body. This is what scripture says. The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. The spiritual does not come first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was made from the dust of the earth. He came from the earth. The second man came from heaven. The people on earth are like a man who is made from the dust of the earth. The people in heaven are like the one who came from heaven. As he, as we have worn the likeness of the man who is made from the dust of the earth, we will also wear the likeness of the man who came from heaven. We have this glimpse of what those heavenly realms look like from Revelations 22. And as I read these words, think about how much Ray enjoyed the outdoors and how much he might now be enjoying this setting. The angel showed me a river filled with the water of life as clear as crystal. It was flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb. Between the street of the city and the river, there was a tree of life visible from both sides. It produced 12 kinds of fruit. Each month had its own fruit. The leaves of the tree will heal the nations. There will be no longer any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city. His servants will worship Him, 
and see his face. His name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night, and they will not need any light. No light from lamps or the sun, because the Lord God will shine on them. They will rule as kings forever and ever. In Jesus' last evening with his disciples, he made these promises to them, reading a few verses from the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my Father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you, so that you will always be where I am, and you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind, and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Raymond Dow Myers was born to Joseph and Ethel on March 12, 2019, excuse me, 1926, in rural in Ross, Iowa. As a child of the Great Depression, he and his sisters, Marion and Janine, worked on a family farm alongside their parents. Eventually, because of the Depression, they had to move in with family for a time before moving into town nearby Kyoto. Growing up in hard times gave Ray a greater appreciation for the things around him, knowing that one day, anything you had could be lost. So learning as much as you could became important to him, as well as not wasting anything. Stories of his childhood include the tale of his sister's favorite red beads. As the sisters teased him, he took revenge by getting hold of those beads and holding them out over the well, threatening to drop them in. Well, they did fall. And he never lived it down. He apologized for it many times. And eventually, he bought her a new set of red beads. Another time when he was little, he poked a beehive and was then chased by the swarm. He ran around the house time and time again. And every time he went past the door, he yelled, open the door, open the door. But those inside didn't want the bees to come in with him. In the early 1990s, Ray took Donna and her son Jeff to see the old farm where he grew up. The house and barn were abandoned, but they were still standing. It was a lovely setting as the entire yard was filled with tall grasses and hundreds of orange tiger lilies waving in the breeze. A gigantic old oak tree stood in the front yard. Two-story farmhouse and small barn looked like a painting that weathered wood that kind of find in picture frames today. Some of the windows were missing, but others were still there. Inside, he showed them the room where he had had to sleep next to his sister's children in order to stay warm, and his baby sister slept with their parents for the same reason. He showed them the old well and said those beads are probably still down there. Wade was proud. When he got his first job, he worked for a farmer for a time, and sometimes only brought home a dime. But it meant that he could help put food on the table for his family. 
One time when they were in town, his parents didn't have enough money for something that they needed. And he said, it's okay, I can buy it for us. And he did. He learned how to fix things, especially farm equipment and motor vehicles. He liked doing this so much, he left school after ninth grade to become a full-time mechanic. In order to serve his country, Ray enlisted in the U.S. Army Air Force during World War II. During his time in service, he was assigned to the 872nd Engineer Aviation Battalion in the Asiatic Theater. And later, he served both in Busan, the Philippines, and in Okinawa, Japan, even learning a little bit of Japanese. He was a heavy truck driver, eventually a dispatcher, and his squadron assisted in the construction of airstrips. His knowledge of engine repair helped him become the best truck driver in his unit, and so he ended up with the new trucks because his captain said that he would take good care of them. He would later teach his daughter some of those mechanical skills, and so they know their tools, and they helped fix vehicles. After military service, Ray married Evelyn Wolfe, October 12, 1947, at Union Presbyterian Church in Lost Nation. He'd been driving all the way from Kyoto to Lost Nation just to date her. She helped him get his GED, and they moved to South Clinton, where they raised four children, Teresa, Linda, Donna, and Charles. And he went to work for DuPont in the maintenance department. as a sheet metal worker and a welder. The family had a small garden there. However, when he great planted and carefully nurtured a patch of strawberries, the birds got them just as they ripened. So Ray mowed the whole patch down and said, it. if he wasn't going to get to eat them, neither were the birds. Ray liked his vehicles, working on them often himself, of course. When he had to trade in the Cadillac for a station wagon, he said that's what made him a fan of man. But he put a fluffy carpet in the back end of that station wagon for the kids to lay on. In their time, safety belts were worn. DuPont, where he worked, was very safety conscious, and though that spilled over into the family life as well. Ray was an outdoors man. Living along the river, he had a boat at one time. That was until the flood of 65. At the end of their block, it came to only their doorstep, but the water was much higher at the other end of the street downhill. Folks were using their boats to get to and from their homes. Some of the neighbors had complained about snakes and other such things coming up through the plumbing, and that's when Ray devised a contraption that snatched the toilet lid shut as soon as you stood up. Ray enjoyed fishing. Family fishing trips to Minnesota might be in that station wagon or later in the pickup truck. The youngest kids on those trips had to be separated with Chuck in the front with the folks and Linda and Donna in the back with a topper on, and that was insulated with styrofoam. Orville remembers cousin hunting with Ray for many years. A brother-in-law set them up where they could hunt on farms that belonged to friends. Along with the hunt, there was some tasting of homemade wines and homemade soup that Evelyn had made for lunch. In the 20s, Ray and Orville played guitars together. Ray had one fancy guitar that could play either electric or acoustic. He liked old-time country music, not the new stuff on the country stations today. And a favorite show back then was Hee Haw because of that country music. The family eventually moved out by the airport. There is an acre of grass to be mowed and plenty of room for a garden that included sweet corn, cantaloupe, green beans, radishes, and green bell peppers. Sometimes cucumbers were planted to make pickles. There was an asparagus patch, and at one time there was even a horseradish plant that Ray liked to eat from. Ray lost both his parents within 30 days of each other when he was in his 40s. He'd been going to see them on weekends when he could. He would also get to visit his Uncle Pete in Arizona from time to time, loading up the bike in the truck and driving down. Or sometimes when Pete flew up to visit the family in this area, then Ray would drive a car there for Uncle Pete to use that week. 
Another family outing had been the BMW rally. Most recently, several family members went with their BMW cars and motorcycles to Wisconsin Dells for the rally, leaving us with good times and good memories. Ray loved traveling all over the country with friends and family, enjoying many of those trips on his motorcycle. I heard this morning the story of motorcycle trip and when there was a hard rain, two friends tried to sneak their motorcycles into their hotel room and protect them, but they got caught. Ray was a storyteller, something of a jokester. He loved to tell all sorts of stories about his time in service and to tell a good joke. He also had a great ability to weave jokes right into the story and make you laugh in the middle of them. He had a little fun anytime. Donna remembers the time that she and Ray took little Jeff for a walk. He was heating up just fine, and then Ray got Donna's attention, and they started alternating slowing down and speeding up, so that Jeff was either way ahead or way behind until he finally stopped and said, hey, something's going on, and everyone had to laugh. On a more serious side, Ray passed on his love and respect for nature. Garbage was not to be thrown on the ground, and water was not to be wasted. He took the girls out one night to look up at the stars, and he told them, I want you to look up at those stars and see how many there are, how bright they are, because someday you will be older, and your eyes won't be able to see so well. So look at them now, and remember. Right now, many of you have lots of stories and memories of Ray. I've had the privilege to share just a handful of the stories from family and friends, but you have many more stories among you. So share them with each other. Share them with the family. Write them down. Remember them, especially the family. Tell them to your children and the next generation and the next. And in the same way, Remember and honor some of the things that he taught you. Two things in particular caught my attention, and they both tell me something about Ray and in line with what our faith strives to teach us. In his love for the outdoors, for gardening, even for the stars, Ray knew and appreciated the work of our Creator. In the frugal, practical things he taught you, Ray knew what it meant to be a good steward and that is what our Creator God expects of us, to take care of the things we have, fixing them if possible when they're broken, take good care of the things of this earth, not wasting our natural resources. As Ray cherished the things of this earth, now he has the opportunity to experience the greater glory and beauty of heaven. In his new spiritual body, he is reunited with family and friends. Since he and his buddy Dick left this earth one right after the other, it's not hard to imagine them exploring God's heavenly garden together. They'll have much to show us someday. The Bible tells us that one day these physical bodies will no longer be needed that in God's heavenly realms we will receive a new spiritual body, free from pain, never to decay. We will see for ourselves the tree of life and the river of God. And can't you imagine him enjoying all of that now? God's beautiful garden. This privilege is ours because Jesus prepared the way for us. He gave us this life here and then he paid his life to pay the price for our mistakes so that we could enjoy the next life with him in all the glory of heaven forever. Each of us have a new home waiting there for us if we choose to believe. The hymn we sang earlier reminds us of the spiritual truth. Christ died going on for us, giving us life. And the hymn that we'll sing before we go today 
we are reminded that living or dying, we belong to God. Ray Myers belongs to God, and so do we. Therefore, put your faith and your hope in these promises of God for this life and for the next. If you'll open your bulletins once again, let's affirm together our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen.
us take one step forward at a time each day that we live, and who promises the glory of heaven, for we will live forever. And so until then, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit remain with you always. Amen.